Hey brothers and sisters, God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. Uh, I've got four articles here. This will be your world news update for the 1st of September uh, 2020. It's hard to believe that we've already now closed out the month of August and we have now arrived here to September. A lot of people are calling this a September to remember already. So, you know, we got, you know, one down pretty much, 29 days to go, and, and we'll see if this is indeed a September to remember. But I've got four articles here off of endtimeheadlines.org, and I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. I'm still trying to get my bearings straight a little bit. I, I literally just woke up like 20 minutes ago, so I'm, I'm still kind of tired. But, you know, I wanted to come on here and give you guys a little bit of an update this morning, um, so I will go ahead and get into the first article. So, first article, endtimeheadlines.org, twin quakes of 6.8 and 6.3 magnitudes respectively strike off the coast of Chile. Powerful magnitude 6.8 earthquake has reportedly struck off the coast of northern Chile at a depth of 22 miles and was centered 48 miles northeast of the Atacama city of Valinar. Uh, the quake was followed by a magnitude of 6.3 only minutes later and was felt as far south as the capital, which is Santiago, and in Antofagasta, 826 miles further north. Locals from the region captured videos showing windows rattling and items falling to the ground. Radio stations reported that boulders broke off hills and the electricity was briefly cut off. There have been no immediate reports of any casualties or damage from the quakes within the Chilean Navy, assuring that there was no possibility of a tsunami. Chile is one of the many hot spots for earthquakes that are located in the Pacific Ring of Fire region that often produces larger earthquakes. Uh, the last major quake occurred on February 27, 2010, and set off tsunamis and killed 526 people. Now, I know that there had been no reports of any damage or casualties or any tsunamis to hit Chile, but I do, re I do recall late last night when the quake actually happened, there were brief tsunami warnings that were issued uh, for parts of Chile. So, you know, luckily it didn't lead to any actual tsunamis. Um, so I would say they definitely dodged a bullet there because 6.8 is a pretty substantial magnitude for an earthquake. So there you go. That's what's gone on in Chile. Second article here in the States. Yellowstone's giantess geyser uh, erupts for the first time in six years. And it roars back to life. And we're going to read this in timeheadlines.org. After remaining dormant for more than six years, Yellowstone's giantess geyser has erupted, springing back to life. The giantess geyser, located in Wyoming, has historically erupted two to six times per year, according to the National Park Service. The geyser was captured on video footage webcam that revealed the geyser erupting as park goers watched on. According to the Park Service website, the giantess geyser characterizes, quote, infrequent but violent eruptions, and these eruptions can cause the surrounding area to shake from underground steam explosions right before the initial eruptions. Uh, these eruptions may occur twice hourly and continue for 4 to 48 hours. Streams from eruptions can reach you know, upwards 100 to 200 feet. According to Fox News, the six-year dormancy between eruptions was officially the longest since the 1980s. Uh, but the geyser has had years-long dormant periods before. According to the agency, quote, why geysers turn off and on is something that we have not well understood yet, but they are very fragile systems nonetheless, according to the USGS. So that is what's going on in Yellowstone with the giantess geyser. After six years of not erupting at all, after being completely dormant, it finally erupted again. So there you go. That is what's going on there. Third article. Now we're traveling to Afghanistan for this news update. Catastrophic flooding leaves at least 110 dead and over 2,000 homes destroyed in Afghanistan off endtimeheadlines.org. Uh, Parwan, Afghanistan has been struck with catastrophic flooding that has reportedly left at least 110 people dead and roughly 2,000 homes destroyed with authorities noting that the death toll may continue to rise from this thing. Along with fatalities, disaster management has also reported that dozens have been injured and more than a thousand people have been evacuated. 
The report stated that torrential rains continued overnight, uh, triggering, triggering the deluge that caught people off guard, producing rapid waters that carried mud and debris that toppled houses and swept many away to their watery graves. Uh, Mahmoud Samadi, who is a uh, resident of Parwan's capital, Charakar, said that he was awakened by the sound of floodwaters raging through his neighborhood, prompting him to evacuate his family out of the city. Samadi told the New York Times that when he came back, his house was submerged and six homes on his street had already been destroyed. Quote, I don't know about the exact casualties in our street, but I know many people were killed and wounded. This was according to another local, 70-year-old Hamida, also described the moment the flood struck, saying, quote, I grabbed the window and was holding it for two hours until the neighbors came to rescue me, unquote, adding that she had lost everything, everything. Along with fatalities from the disaster, wide swaths of agricultural land have also been destroyed. With the downpour rains wiping out all crops in the eastern Nuristan province, along with many roads that were also destroyed in northern Kapisa, Panjar, and eastern Paktia. Very sad news to hear coming out of Afghanistan. I mean, they had already been struggling with producing crops. This is just going to add to the famine because there's not going to be any crops there because of these, you know, what, what seem to be record-breaking floods going on throughout Afghanistan. And to, to hear that there's so many people now that have lost, you know, a lot, all the way to those who have completely lost everything. It's just very sad to hear. Very sad to hear. Please pray for the people of Afghanistan, especially our brothers and sisters, because it's very, very sad to hear of things like that. That's the third article. Fourth article. Now we're going to Italy for this one. This one's off of endtimeheadlines.org. Giant hail and tornado strike northern Italy, leaving at least four people dead. Uh, powerful storms producing lightning, giant hail, and tornadoes have struck over, over uh, northern Italy, uh, over the course of the weekend, causing extensive damage and leaving at least four people dead. The severe weather uh, struck wide swaths of Italy over the weekend, from South Tyrol down to the central region of Lazio around Rome, killing at least four people in two separate storms and leaving several missing. Quote, a supercell outbreak with numerous intense and deadly storms has verified across northern Italy. Severe weather Europe meteorologists noted on August 31st, quote, excuse me, several tornadoes were reported besides destructive winds, very, very large hail events, and severe flooding, unquote. Hailstones the size of eggs were being reported from the storm in uh, Cremona, Mantova, and Bergamo, and uh, in Lombardy, uh, forcing local authorities to call in heavy machinery to clear out roads. The city of Verona has been struck by severe flooding, giant hailstones, and strong winds causing considerable damage. Severe damage has been reported from the entire uh, Ventio region, with uh, Vicenza and Belluno areas struck particularly hard, where Vicenza alone was reportedly struck by a tornado that actually flattened trees, fences, and road signs, and uh, damaged buildings as well. So that is what's going on in Italy. That'll conclude the core of your world news update. We're seeing a lot of flooding in Afghanistan, severe storms in Italy, um, a geyser within Yellowstone erupts again after uh, laying dormant for six years. And then you have two earthquakes known as twin quakes strike the northern parts of Chile. 6.8, 6.3 uh, respective magnitudes. So there you go. That'll be your world news update. I figured I'd go ahead and read Matthew 24 because, I mean, we're seeing this every day anyway, right? I mean, we're seeing... Constant daily fulfillments of Matthew 24. This is just the world we're living in, folks. This is just how it goes. This is how the cookie crumbles, as us bakers would always say. Matthew 24, and we're going to go verse 5 through 12. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We are seeing that. 100% in our society today. 
And we're seeing all these natural disasters taking place worldwide, not just within the U.S., but worldwide we are seeing catastrophic natural disasters playing out right before our very eyes. I actually want to go ahead and read Luke chapter 21, verse 25 through 28, uh, which once again is a really good depiction of what's going on in our world today. Luke 21, verse 25 through 28, And there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves are roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And that's what we should be doing, family. Be lifting up our heads, looking up in them clouds, because soon that's where we're going to be. That's where we're going to be very soon, man. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at any nanosecond is going to come down and he's going to snatch us up to be where he is. And that's a very beautiful thought. But I just wanted to make sure that I gave you guys a news update. I'll go ahead and read you all the gospel, try to keep it a little bit short here, and then head out. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received." How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, in that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. That's what saves you. You believe that in your heart, you're saved and dwell with the Holy Spirit. Right? That Christ died on the cross, shedding his precious blood for the remission of all mankind's sin, all mankind's sin, past, present, and future, on that cross at Calvary. And he was buried in the tomb three days, proving he was dead. And he rose from the death on the third day according to the scriptures. Why? For our justification, right? We are justified, we are saved by faith alone, by putting our faith and trust in Jesus's finished redemptive work alone, right? Because it's not about us, right? Religion says do, Jesus Christ said done. He already did all the work on the cross, right? All we have to do is believe that what he did was enough. That's the big thing. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish. People say that you can lose your salvation and perish, but this verse actually disproves that. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, not temporal life, not conditional life, okay, not life until you fall short. That's not what it says. It says everlasting life. That means a life without end. That means when you die, you won't go to hell, right? You would go to heaven because you believed on Christ. That means when the rapture happens, you'll be snatched up and transformed and not left behind because you were a believer. Okay, very, very simple. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. John three thirty six. he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The wrath of God's referring to the seven-year tribulation period. Excuse me, I'm still waking up. Um, it's the seven-year tribulation period, which is to soon come upon the world. John chapter 6, verse 40, which we'll read right now. And this is the will of him that sent me. This is referring to God the Father. Uh, this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I think it's time for you to make a decision. Believe or not believe. Accept the free gift of salvation or reject the free gift of salvation. That's what it comes down to, man. Belief is the foundation of salvation. If you believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead, you're saved. You're a child of God, an heir of God, and a co-heir with Christ Jesus. It's all it takes. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Please believe on Christ, you guys, because time is short. All right, so that is where I will leave you. I'll see you guys in the next video, should the Lord tarry. Otherwise, God bless.